Okay, everyone, it's Gordon Einstein, your local Dubai crypto attorney. We're doing something a little bit different now. We're not on Zoom. We're not in a podcast studio. We're at CoinW, which is an interesting new exchange. I found out recently, thanks to a mutual connection here in Dubai, and I am with the impresario entrepreneur behind it, Sonia Shah. Yes, Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for your hospitality. It's very nice to be here, and you have a, a beautiful office and Pleasure, pleasure. Yeah, so good to have you guys here. It's the first time I do this uh, in the office here, actually. <laughs> uh, this is probably the first time doing it in your office, too. Yeah. All right, so look, 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 dear audience, this is sort of a preview to the real show. We're going to do it on podcast. So you, we do, it's a little bit of a teaser. I don't know whether it'll look here at Wonderful Sonia or look at the, the TV. Just bear with us. We'll figure, we'll figure it out, okay? I'm breaking the fourth wall here. But <laughs> tell me a little bit. Let's, let's start with the end. What is Coin W? And what brings you here? Sure, sure. Um, I mean, in one word, crypto exchange. So our centralized crypto exchange, and then we established back in 2017. Oh, wow. So I think in two weeks' time, we are having our seven years anniversary in Dubai at the Royal. Um, yeah, so it's happy it's, anniversary. Yeah, it's a bit of a celebration. Seven years, so we've been through quite a few different uh, up and downs, yeah. bull runs and bear runs, and then the fact that we still stand strong, which is you know quite a success, uh, quite an achievement for the team. And then, but definitely we have gone through quite a lot of um, structures and strategy wise. Mm. Um, previously, we focused quite a lot on the Asia Pacific region. Mm. Um, the headquarters you have, used to be in Melbourne, Australia. Um, but, is, is that a slight Australian accent I'm hearing? Uh, I'm trying not to. Don't uh, try <laughs> Standard English, not ugly English. <laughs> I'm from Los Angeles. I speak Los Angeles English. It's okay. Diversity is our strength. Diversity is good. Yeah. yeah? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, we moved down to Dubai three years ago. And then I, now our headquarters in, in Dubai. Um, we're getting our uh, final license from Vara in Dubai as well. You anticipated my lawyer question. <laughs> yeah. It's very, yeah. very important. Compliance is always one of our key focus. Okay. Um, so in terms of the uh, market share, I think globally we have more than 10 million registered users and so then daily volume on spot is about 10 billion. On, uh, sorry, spot is about half a billion and then um, futures I think around 10 billion. I mean, compared to one of the, you know, those big wells and exchanges, we're still not there yet. Well, at least you're not FTX. <laughs> no, no. <Okay. laughs> yeah, I think or, that, or that, that, yeah, that, I think that's one of the reasons I think we're still here because the founders and all this original, you know, brain behind the business are pretty much technical people. Mm -hmm. They're not Wall Street people. I'm not saying Wall Street people they're not good, but they can be quite aggressive when it comes to when it comes to good time and market mm -hmm. is going good. They actually go through a very, very crazy um Wall Street game sort of management. They can be yes. risky and then that why um put a lot of business, you know, it's not because it's not a bad business, it's bad practice. So because our founders and all our management group all originally from tech backgrounds, so mm -hmm. they're not really so much, you know, financial or the Wall Street sort of background, and they focus a lot on the technology itself. So the parent company itself, we also have other blockchain investments like wallet. Actually, let me roll you back and then we'll roll forward to all that. So yeah, you, yeah. you said it started in 2017. What, what was the initial inspiration or what happened that caused it to start? Um, initially 2017, because we were actually going through quite a bit of bull run that time, ICO, mm -hmm. lot of, you know, coin listing and everything. And then, so there's certainly quite a lot of demand on the, you know, centralized exchange, um, uh, transactions. Mm -hmm. So the original founders, they are not, um, the very first group of founders, not really, uh, at the moment anymore. So mm -hmm. in 2018, we went through a bit of a restructure. And then so the business uh, parent company from Melbourne took over the business. And where was it originally? Was originally it? they started from China. Okay. And then so the market share also started from China. And then I think we got quite comfortable even up until 2021. Mm -hmm. We have quite a bit of you know good market share in China. But everyone knows in China the crypto crackdown and all this you know uh, at, least, at least for some people. people. Yeah, so it, it definitely put a lot of pressure on the business. So that from that time, we are actively, you know, trying to push out the Chinese market and try to grow the global market. So you, you went through your corporate change. You founded in 2017. You went through your corporate change in 2018-ish. Yeah. You became yeah. based in Australia. And I bought it, yeah, Australia. And the market is still mostly in China, yeah. Okay, and the, the current cadre or class of mm -hmm. uh, owners slash managers, mm -hmm. are they the ones from 2018? 
Yes, yes, still, okay. yes. From there, and then there haven't been really any change. So the parent company, holding company, is still um, the, uh, what you see, the leisure tech company from uh, Melbourne registered. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do, I mean, you mean your lawyer, so say, Try to be very precise. The audience for the show is yeah. sort of the yeah. level decision maker types. Yeah. They're not the day day trader types, they're the yeah. structuring politics, yeah. you know, yeah. business founder types. So they, they love this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think a lot of them have gone through i mean you, i'll give you i'll give you some praise i mean you know the, the world is shifting in terms of regulation mm -hmm. and you have to be very light on your feet because yes. you know one jurisdiction may be favorable one moment yes but then another one changes and, yes. and you can't go down you got yeah. people depending on you yes. yes and so i know china went through a big regulatory change yes. in that period and you didn't yeah. you didn't hold up shot you didn't yeah. go dark you didn't go underground you no. you organized which is yeah which is, yeah i think i me and the people watching the show would appreciate because yeah. In this in this business, you have to be resilient and adaptable. Absolutely, you know, not yeah. just to tech but to regulation. So yeah. that, that's great. And yeah. the fact that you still have that crew in two thousand eighteen mm. yeah, that that happens a lot. By the way, the people who start a place aren't necessarily the ones who can carry yeah. it forward. But they, that's not anything bad about them. They can go yeah. on and start the next thing. Yeah. So yeah. that's super. So what what is we'll, we'll talk about the different business lines in a second. But what is Coin W's main focus? Change um, it with yeah, what main, detail? Main focus we pretty much on the exchange side and the spot trading and then some other products as well. Um, so we focus quite a lot in emerging markets at the moment because mm -hmm. that's where the biggest population growth in terms of you know crypto adoption. Yes. And then so in that sense, we try to facilitate you know the emerging markets who doesn't really have too much crypto literacy to really get access to crypto you know uh, assets. Mm -hmm. And then so instead of going DEX. Central, like you know, the central exchange is quite hard to navigate and mm. it's also risky. And then um central exchange is quite a lot of different options out there, and some of them can be quite co complicated to navigate. So we try to keep our one simple and then easy for mm. beginners, and then at the same time build the product on top of that for certain regions that you know allows, of course, in terms of the legal framework and everything. So yeah, central exchange facilitate crypto transactions, yeah. And one thing Anastasia, who introduced us, explained is that you, like you just mentioned, you have a retail focus, and there seems to be like an education community focus also. Yes, yes. yes. Is that an intentional strategy, or is that something you backed into, or how did that come to pass? I think we're also trying to build a strategy that differentiates us from other exchanges. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of like how, how comprehensive the product can be. I mean, the, all the big ones, they already done a very, very good job. Like they, the user, you know, interface and how friendly it is. But I think in terms of the crypto adoption now, we're looking at now for we have half a billion people globally on crypto asset, mm -hmm. but we are still far away from the massive adoption. If you look at the numbers, like globally, there are more than 1 billion people use iPhone. We don't even have 1 million people on crypto yet. So we have, in the next two, three years, looking at probably 300 million to 400 million people on board to use crypto. Actually, you're talking about, you know, the flippening between Bitcoin and Ethereum, when there's the flippening between crypto and iPhone? Yes. We should have a party. Yeah, yeah, we definitely should. Okay. <laughs> That's the massive adoption rate. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so in that sense, we're still early stage. But early stage for industry players like us, mm -hmm. Our key mission, not of course, like to be sustainable in the business. At the same time, how we actually grow the business and the ecosystem bigger, mm -hmm. play our part. And education has always been uh, has always been the most important part, missing part in the crypto world. A lot of people don't really know how to do it. Just don't know how to do it. So, especially when it comes to the emerging market, the education infrastructure, everything is not really well that well. So, and then. Well, yeah. I think I think you have both challenges. You have, you have computer literacy, yeah. Then you have crypto literacy, it's different. and then you have trading literacy. Yeah. You're, you're the, yeah. it's, it's quite it's, different. It's a, it's a yeah, it's challenging a lot. Stack. Yeah, it's quite yeah. a lot to navigate when it comes to to crypto. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, most people in the, in this are in the money. They're in investment. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, this is how the business, how the in industry uh balloon, balloon because people into it, they see the opportunity, they see the potential, they want to be part of it. So how to really get users to come on board safely, understand the risk, and then really be able to navigate uh through this whole jungle, crypto, you know, it's, it's part of the very important mission for us, like because we're retail focused, yes. get our users to understand crypto better, to understand the industry better, to understand the risk better. It will always benefit us and benefit the whole industry better. So I think about that. That's both 
a lot of responsibility because it's retail and it's a lot yeah. of opportunity because yeah. it's retail. Yeah, crypto is retail. I mean, now only now they can run the institutional company and yes, but it's all from, from retail. We cannot forget the retail community. They are the key pivotal part of the crypto community. So we need to get more retail users. And retail. I mean, that, that, that's original vision behind Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, we don't need to, you know, have Wall Street big players again control the financial system like they used or in the traditional financial system. Toys. Like I said, like they used to. <laughs> I, I, I think you're about four or five years too early, but I, I think you're on the right path. Yes. So, that's your, so what, was, what was your personal epiphany about crypto? You yourself, how did you become exposed to it and how did it, how did it catch your imagination? Yeah, I mean, I, I will say I'm a, I'm a late joiner. I'm not really like the earlier, um, like back in 2009, 2010, people already know it. I think the early adopters all like coders and then mm -hmm. technical people, they understand the, the white paper, the code. And so for me, because I used to be in the traditional financial service uh, a lot, and then mm -hmm. I used to run recruitment service for financial firms, mm -hmm. and they see the fees, and I understand the traditional financial service industry very, very well. So from there, of course, crypto came to my uh, attention from 2008. So by that time- 2008? Yes, it was very- so you were, like 2008? No, yeah. 18 or 8? 2000, sorry, 2018. 2018. Okay, because they. Yeah. I need to come on talking. 18, 18. 18. 18. Okay, so. 2009. We, yeah. we, we, we just met Satoshi Nakamoto. Okay, Sonia, it's, it, Sonia actually wrote that white paper. And because she came up with Bitcoin in 2008. Well, Satoshi. And, and she thought she was a late joiner. So. <laughs> Wow, it's a Satoshi, nice thing. <laughs> I, I, thought, I, I thought it was Craig Wright. What was I thinking? Okay, is it, it's this nice lady from, yeah, from China. Okay, sure. Okay. I, I thought it was a Mossad and CIA. Now, now, now we know who came with Bitcoin. Okay, good. Okay, that's a, that's a relief. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You were making me feel really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 like, I have no, no, Okay, so for 2018, 18, yeah, fine. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, and what was, I mean, obviously by then you heard of it. When did it catch your mind? Uh, of course, the last bull run, 2021. So okay. when Tesla officially acquired uh, Bitcoin. Yes. And then that was the- That was a good moment. That was a good moment from, I remember that was 2021, January, Bitcoin price from 30, jump like, you know, 50, 60. It was, good it was, times. It was crazy, yeah. So yeah. I, I walked before that, so walked quite a lot before that. So that was the time that you see the institutional, um, very like Elon Musk and then Ken Bill, they all yep. are very you know at the forefront of technology and actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna completely divert the conversation. So Elon Musk famously stepped back from Bitcoin supposedly because of environmental concerns. Um, what, what, I mean, I don't want to really go too deep on that. I, I don't think he lost his faith in crypto at all. He's a true believer. I, I don't just think he's yeah, yeah, I don't think he's still a true believer. But there, of course, people like him be bigger. He has a lot of pressure from you know, all I, I, I think so and everything. So, but that doesn't really mean that he doesn't believe in it. So, I don't, I don't think so either. The, yeah. Okay, yeah. just I want to get your big take. I, 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 I tend to agree. I think you're implying that. Here he is running a public company. Yes. And he's got a lot of things exactly. going on. Yeah. And he yeah, you know, he doesn't need another vector of attack. Yeah, exactly. You know? exactly. And plus now he's got Twitter dude. <laughs> so, okay, fair enough. Okay, so 2001 is so it, it sounds like your initial hook is you got this actually, I think this is great. It, it was sort of the financial aspect of it, the fact that people are making money in it. Yeah. The big fact it's going up. I just did another show where someone was saying that people might believe that the speculation or this investment or this excitement is a bug, but it's actually a feature. It is. Because when people dive in because they're interested, A, yeah. they learn about it, and B, yeah. they drive innovation. Yeah. So I think Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, crypto, I mean, a lot of people got in initially because they heard all these sex stories. Mm -hmm. Some people just get wealthy overnight. And then I think it's the first thing ever that make it possible as well. And a lot of real things happen like that and then yeah. so i mean this is very very important feature like they said to drive more attention to drive people in and then people are going to study more learn more and then put more effort in there and then the thing with crypto once we're in there you're never out because you just see the reason why it exists why it get popular why it is crypto why it's you know why bitcoin is bitcoin you yeah. see the whole reason behind it and you just don't 
understand why you need to go back to the you know the traditional way anymore after that. That's what we need in the adoption. Yep. Then then from there, new project, new technologies come forward, new use case come, and then that's when you will see the whole industry start, you know, like it becomes more popular. But that's all start from the early attention. The people want to be in there. And then any token, any project, they need people's attention to be popular, to be, you know, sure. and then, you know, to catch their attention. And then the project will raise enough money to grow. And, then, and also me, you know, look at the meme in the last few months. And then in the previous bull run, people think meme is just like it's a job. Like you think about it's not investment in you gambling, it's yeah. a job. But now meme is a real thing. It's a real thing that catches so much attention from a lot of people that don't really understand crypto too much. It's easy to understand and easy to get in. And it's quick money. Sometimes people get really, you know, uh, earn a lot of profit in their short time. And then it fits to a certain type of, you know, appetite and then with the comes to crypto. And then because of that, look at the Solana, you know, chain that's really popular because of the main point, a lot of transactions happening on the chain. Have you heard of Slurf? Learn. Yeah, somebody just told me about this. I yeah, was like, I, I like, couldn't believe it. I I bought some as well, of course. Like, <laughs> bought it all as well. And then, yeah, there there are quite a lot of you see in the last two three months a lot of memes came out and then the market cap came one billion in a in a few days. Nothing like that ever happened in traditional business. And because of that, a lot of people start paying attention. They're like, wow, how did that happen? Let me look at it. Or when can I catch the next opportunity? Then the, it's slowly adoption more and more. So yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm personally of the opinion that when you if you get attracted to crypto first because of the profits, in order to trade well, you have to understand some of the underlying tech eventually. Absolutely. And once you understand that, and once you start understanding decentralization, yeah, you start to what usually happens is you go down this rabbit hole and trying to understand well what's the U.S. dollar? Yeah. You know what's monetary policy? Yeah. What are yeah. interest rates? What's fractional reserve banking? Yes. And it kind of takes you down an interesting political philosophical path. Mm. You know, it's like a it's. it's I think it's, that's it's, what it's the, like the mind mind mind, mind, right? you know that that because from the first time in human history people can look at the financial system from a different aspect yeah, and well, really pulling back the curtain. Yes, right? and then yeah, you can really operates from a different aspect now, like function. For example, now if you travel globally, um, realistically you can travel around and then without really using your fiat money crypto because crypto credit cards ready, crypto yep. wallets already, and there are a lot of OTC services everywhere. And of course, like depends on the jurisdiction in the place, mm -hmm. but it's totally possible. It's a huge use case happening now already. Just I've noticed that it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, I, I'm old enough to remember traveler's checks. Mm. And when I studied in Germany as a, as a kid, my mm. mom gave me traveler's checks and I had to go to yeah. banks and cash them. Then yeah. credit cards became almost like yeah. a universal currency, yeah. but they had their own little issues with yeah. exchange rates and interest. Yeah. And now, you know, USDT, it's yeah. you know, the, the, thing, the thing where you have to declare a currency when you cross the border, it's like, there's no border. The, yeah, border. who says where your USDT is? Yeah, it's on the blockchain. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's no it, it's not in your inside your body. Yeah, so you're, you're not. You don't. You know, it's decentralized. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's everywhere. It's nowhere. And then yeah. you're like, oh wow, this is fantastic. Yeah. You know, and then I, I, I like how it kind of pushes the future. So, and it, you started talking about it before, but I wanted to get the basis. What else is Coin W working on? You, you said the parent company's legend. Mm. And what are the other verticals you're working um, on? So we have. Main three big lines. So one, Coin W is a uh, retail focus on the uh, crypto exchanges, centralized okay, sure. exchanges, and we also have our crypto custodian service, wallet service. So the wallet, wallet, wallet as a service. So you, um, for a lot of institutional uh, investors, like they don't really have the technical know-how to really custody, you know, their their own crypto assets mm -hmm. and then manage and on-chain security and everything. So we have a crypto. Uh, wallet service as well. Let me dive in that one because that, that's been an area I think of interest a lot of people I, I work with. Is that a fully operational product or is that under yeah. development? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's fully operational. It's also our wallet started from 2009, if I remember. It's, mm -hmm. We've been developing the product a long time. So we have the retail wallet service. What is a custody uh, wallet? Mm -hmm. So you can swap on the wallet. You can store your uh, crypto in the wallet. You can do uh, investment in the wallet as well, like staking. And then also our wallet has very unique function for the retail one. It's like you can also do a joint wallet with your family. For example, you and your wife, you want to hold crypto together. 
And then you said oh, the audience, my wife is in the room. <laughs> and I'm surprised she did. I'm surprised she didn't look up when yeah. Yeah, repeat, repeat that for my wife. <laughs> yeah, instead of you give her the private key on uh, you know on chain wallet, our cousin's wallet wallet allow you to really have a wallet joint and share wallet code. And any transaction need both approval to go in and out. Especially going out, of course, and then so it's a company's wallet. So, so, so dear audience, <laughs> her, her, her eyes are going wide. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, this, this is going to be interesting news. news. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. honey, honey, <laughs> how, how do you feel about this new short? How do you feel about this new joint wallet function? Yes. Right. Join the wallet. Oh, yes. Thanks, Sonia. Thanks for saying that. Right yeah, that's why we were right here. Yeah. <laughs> I have a new room with three wallets. Your husband and wife should have a joint wallet. <laughs> okay, you saw it here first on YouTube. I'm so, right, you're losing a lot of audience from here. All the guys like, no way. Uh, <laughs> that's why I want to because I want to have my money from my wife. <laughs> Well, you, you can have one joint wall with your wife. Someone told me like that in Australia. I was going to say, oh, I want to well, they, 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 they should say that. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, oh, mo moving right along beyond the joint wall. Okay, then what else? And then another one is uh, wet label service, uh, SaaS service for uh, crypto exchange. So, because now I think globally we have around, I mean, small, big, more, probably more, more than a thousand different exchanges, centralized exchanges, different regions, different, you know, local ones and maybe international ones. But in terms of the growth space of the crypto users, and then I don't think we have enough, like 1,000 businesses is not enough. So it's still a lot of changes coming out as well. Sure. So we provide full stack a, um, technology and liquidity service for anyone who wants to open up their own exchanges, um, government, some 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 countries like they, they want to open their government backed exchanges mm -hmm. and then of course other oh, that's interesting. Yes. Where where are you seeing if you can you can say where are you seeing uh, mostly the like you know um the emerging markets like you know Salvador and then Central Africa those sort of things they already officially um like Central African Republic or Central Africa in general Re so, Republic which one really? which one that legalized crypto I think Central, I was there Central Africa I think it's known I was there a couple of years ago with with the president as compound yeah yeah they they uh, legalized uh, crypt, uh Bitcoin or crypto last year they kind of did and then yeah th there's a whole story there I'll, I'll show you some pictures the they, they were also coming up with the currency of their own that yes as, as yet hasn't gone anywhere a uh, digital currency yeah, yeah. The, but Salvador's a very interesting case mm. but, I think Tar I think Central African Republic has its challenge, but El Salvador is very interesting, especially yeah. for Bitcoin adoption. Yeah, I mean, I I just I mean, what we see because we deal with a lot of governments as well, like you know, for the different regions, and then the government government always, of course, they want to be part of this the game, right? Mm -hmm. So if they if they already legalize crypto, and then the nice thing is just like share you know exchanges we legalize share security and then next thing you, you build uh, brokers and then platform mm -hmm. and then in some country all these brokers and uh, exchanges that are partially owned by government as well and then i mean that's not what crypto people want but it's becoming quite a bit of demand and trend some government want to have officially their own exchange that you know watched and governed by their framework it's, a, it's always this interesting back and floor, back and flow, ebb and flow. How do I say this? It's always an interesting challenge if you're operating in the real world mm -hmm. about whether you want to be decentralization, mm -hmm. anti regulation purist, yeah, or whether you're in another CBDC world, yeah. And there's yeah. where the two meet it's, is you, I think we can't buy that as a business, mm -hmm. like, we got to work with the CDBC, the government side, and then just everyone has to be meet halfway and then have to, you know, work around. And it, it, I, I, it, you, I think as a business, you're right, but I think yeah. maybe the individual operators. Individual, yes, absolutely. I mean, business, like we just know, we can't really... No, you're, you're, completely you're, staying you're, outside you're, 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 you have to pay your taxes. Exactly, you, have to, exactly. you have to not go to jail. Yeah, so you're you're yeah. going to have to interact. You have to, yes. Um, though I, I think... The, I think I mean, this is more of a conversation than an interview, I guess. But yeah. I, I, th I think the role of business is to both be in compliance, but also to actively engage regulators to make it as soft of a touch as possible mm. and to encourage innovation where possible. Yes, absolutely. So not absolutely. get captured 
yeah. by the system, but yeah. influence the system. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think probably that why most people are in crypto in Dubai because the UAE government using that approach. Yes, they put in the right structure, the framework, but they not really stopping the innovation and scare people away mm -hmm. with the regulation compliance. And then so we find they have a very open-minded approach and then a very progressive approach as well and work with business and individual. And even the central bank here, they're trying to listen and see how they can really work along as well. But some regions, some countries, they just completely, like China, let's shut down. Or China. United States. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I know, like the those crypto people coming out of the US now. <laughs> well, I, I wish I, I wish more of them would come here. Um, maybe, maybe I can, I'll, I'll lead to that a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of the US people, it's a, it's a little bit far from family, and there's a time zone issue. Yeah. But they go to Puerto Rico for the tax reasons. They yeah. go to El Salvador, or there's nothing super, super, super close that's like a, a free port or free heaven when it comes to crypto. I don't think so. Not like here, Dubai. It used to be Singapore, quite a hub. A lot of business and people go there. Um, because I mean, financial system. I think Hong Kong. Okay. Hong Kong opening up now, but Hong Kong. I mean, at this stage, they're not really as structured, and the environment not really because I mean, they went to a really complete crackdown to open up, and it takes a bit time. Takes a while. Yeah. So now I know, like, there are a lot of things happening there. They start regulating things, and then the TF going open, and then uh, exchanges also. I think there are two exchanges got license already. Mm, um, yeah, and then also is other things all like in, in on the way. But I think at this stage. Maybe I'm biased. Dubai is the best. <laughs> UAE, oh, yeah. UAE is the best. <laughs> yeah. UAE is definitely the best in the region. Yeah. Definitely, for, yeah. for sure. They are very, very progressive and then they're very open minded mm -hmm. in a way. They yeah. see the future. They are not scared of the risk. And then, I mean, they are managing it very, very well. They are. And there's a, there's, I agree with you. There's an interesting dynamic. I mean, it's a small country, but there's, Functionally, four regulators. There's ESCA on the federal yeah. level. Yeah. You GFC. You got yeah. two financial free zones. Yeah. GFC and ADGM, ADGM. And you have VARA. Yes. So yes. this little, a little country, bit uh, hard to navigate. Yes. yes. Uh, it, it, it's it's hard to navigate. But if you're in DIFC, you're governed by DFC. If you're yes. In ADGM, you're in governed by them. If yes. you're in Dubai, but not in DFC, you're mm. governed by VARA. Yes. But they are all competing with each other because. Before you choose where to be, yeah, you're evaluating those four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and here you yeah. are. I mean, I don't think we're not in a free zone, right? Yeah. So you're yeah. you're working with Vara. Yes. And yeah. you know, I, I know that's you know both challenging and rewarding because they're moving fast and they're yeah. learning. Yeah, that's the that's the thing about uh, competing and it makes it you know better. Like it, it's not really really like oh I'm the authority and then that's it and just follow whatever I say. If I move slow, you move slow. So it's not that sort of approach. And then uh, the other one's known as the United States SEC. <laughs> yeah, I said. It. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> yes. So I mean, like from the business perspective, when we navigate around all those regulators in the UAE, also we're like, okay, there are quite a few of them. But I think they also work actively to see how to streamline and sort of like make it more unified in a way. Um, but it's they're not really making business hard, making their life hard, and then they offer help and they give you clarity as yeah. well, like what you can do, and then if you want to operate this way, and then what we suggest you do this now. So it's very the clarity and then the support, that's all we need. It's yeah. not like you don't really know what the government wants and then you still have to run business, right? And then business then does shut down and they can't turn the lights off, just, you know, wait for them to understand what crypto is. And then so, but some countries, some region, they're just really, really slow. And then they don't really understand blockchain, anything. They're just like, okay, you can't do this because we don't understand. So that's a bit of- They're not gonna stop us. We'll yeah. either go in the shadows or we'll go somewhere else. You know? Exactly, you can't stop innovation. They, they, they exist for a reason. It's It really has a reason to be here and mm -hmm. more and more people adopt uh, adoption coming. So you can't stop, you just have to work. Government needs to work with it. We need business need to work with government. Government also needs to work with business and individuals. Yeah. And the ones who get with the groove and don't, do it resentfully, we'll be yeah. the global winners. Yeah. You're just exactly. And you're part of this. Yeah. Here. I, hopefully. <laughs> no, 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 you're ready for this. I mean, this office is beautiful. You got a big international operation here. We're a trying. Great leader. Uh, and I saw that you introduced us, said that you have a very Thank nice you. thing where you sit with your people at yes. a desk. You know, <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you're, you're perfectly clean, well organized desk. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that hot quotation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So look, th th this is sort of, this went a little bit longer than I expected, but this is a bit of a teaser for we can go a few free, mm. a more extended version in a podcast studio where we can go yeah. depths on the regs and everything yeah. else. It's interesting because I don't even know sometimes what I'm allowed to say, what I'm not allowed to say. Like, <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> Sonia, good job. All right, I'm going to stop them for Thank you.